So the point of what we're doing is we've got a complete Cordova project and one way to also confirm that it's complete is that your Cordova folder should have six items in the root. For a few people I also saw this uh, oddness that when you went into your Cordova project it maybe only had three items. That is wrong. It needs to have all of those subfolders. Very important. So if yours doesn't have all of those six, you need to copy my project again and wait for it to copy. All the work that we're doing is inside this WW project. And so... Let me check one moment. It's probably around 40 megabytes by now. Let's check here. On my flash drive. The funny thing is Windows reports it in two different ways. 44 megabytes, <coughs> size on disk 223. So it should not be like 1 megabyte. It should definitely be up in the multi-megabytes because the jQuery mobile project itself is a couple double-digit megabytes. And then the Cordova stuff, that's even more space. If it's around there, it's okay. Uh, it's not going to be the same for everyone, unfortunately, for s various reasons that I'm not quite sure why. Uh, but uh, even this, mine says it's got 6,775. So what does yours say right there? You're missing like 300 files. That's probably okay. I, I don't know what to say about that. <laughs> Only 300 missing. The way that we know it works, if it matters if those files are missing, if when we do the build, if we do build or run or emulate and it works, then it works. And if you've got different file sizes, that's fine. So it's kind of hard to say, make sure you've got all of this file size. But what I would say is make sure you've got these folders. The problem, of course, could be is you've got the folders, but in the platform it's empty. So when you're sure all of this works, save that file, back it up you don't know what might mess up in the future, and then you have to go back to my file, which is my file, instead of your file. So when you confirm this stuff works with a Cordova run or a Cordova emulate, back that file up, just in case. This work that we're going to do then is in this WW folder, and that whole exercise of taking the old and putting it into the new was in that WW folder. I'm going to further clean this up a little bit. We've got index and index old. Well, I've confirmed that I ran it on a real device, and it should be what it is. It had the splash screen that went away. It's got the index file. It's got the uh, art and computer screens. So some of this older stuff, it's old. I don't need it. It's just taking up space. I can further free up some of these bytes or megabytes. I don't need this index old anymore. I closed my notepad and all of that because I'm going to delete some files that notepad will will lose. So this index old file, I'm going to delete it because I've copied the relevant code into the index new, which is not called index new, it's called index. We've got a CSS folder with a CSS file that is of no worth because we took what we needed from the index file, CSS, into the my styles. CSS. So that whole CSS folder we don't need. I have images and image. What's the difference? Images came from jQuery Mobile when we worked on that. Image came from when we did Cordova Create. And the only thing inside of that is the Cordova logo. If you want to keep that Cordova logo, you need to move it out of, out of IMG and put it into images. I don't need it. I don't want it. I'm going to delete the whole image IMG folder. Not images. Don't delete your images folder. That's a big mistake. Delete IMG. JS folder, we'll leave that alone. We need that JS file. That's got that whole device ready set up. Airstream regular, of course. In my case, I leave that. That's my font index file, of course, is the whole app. 
jQuery mobile, JS, and CSS, of course we need those. jQuery, we need that, of course, and my styles, we need that. So this is my complete project in the WW folder. One of the first things I want to do regarding Cordova is I want to upgrade the way it shows external links. In the art screen, we have a link over to the school's catalog, and it's running with the old, plain old HTML method, open an external website. I want to use a more modern way to do it, a Cordova way. I want to use the in-app browser. Uh, Cordova lets you open like a mini web browser in your app. It sort of looks like it works, but what it's doing is it's opening actually the web browser of the device, completely separate, creating a new process in memory and all of that. And then when I'm done with it, I don't have an obvious way to get back to my app. In Android, I can press back. But if I run this eventually on, a, on an iOS device, there's no back button. So I need to open up external links in the app and have a way to close that external website in the app. That's the in-app browser. You don't have to go to it at the moment, but cordova.apache.org And the documentation has the in-app browser plugin. Again, you can look at it later, but there's in-app browser. This plugin provides a web browser view that displays when calling cordova.inappbrowser.open. So we have a way here to open up a website in a mini web browser. It's basically Cordova in that browser dot open with a couple of parameters. So we're going to do that. We're going to create a way to load up external content in our app. Let's go over to... We need to be working on the index file and the JS file. So of course, index new, the, the only index file that you should have now in the project, and the index.js file. The way we've got the, um, the website opening up is... Uh, on line 114 or so, you have a link over to an external website. So find where you've got it on the home page, a link to an external website. Okay, so what we're going to display is instead of simply trying to open it this way via href, we are going to open it in the in-app browser. This needs a little bit of setup first. This um, this is going over to href. Let's change href 
to say data.url. You have data role, data icon, here's a data URL. Data role, data icon, data whatever is uh, the ones we've used so far are jQuery mobile. But data dash anything is HTML5. Technically, data dash role is HTML5, but it means something because of jQuery mobile. I'm inventing, we're inventing right now, data URL. Nothing in jQuery mobile understands what data URL is. We're making it up because we're going to write some custom JavaScript to use this to open an external website. So I'm storing, I can store any amount of arbitrary data, that's the point of this, any amount of arbitrary data, I can attach it to any element. So I'm attaching in this link an address to go somewhere, and I want to open it via the in-app browser Cordova code. So change that to data URL, data-url, save that, and then we'll jump over to the index.js file. Inside of the received event function, I'm going to kind of clean this up a little bit. Also, I'm going to change it up a little bit like this. We've got the hide the splash screen. We've got the received event console log. And then a space. We've got jQuery mobile and jQuery, so we've got a way to reference elements in the, in the HTML. We had document.getElementById a while ago, but we've, because, we've got jQuery, uh, because we've got jQuery, we can reference objects in a, in a, more, in a vast variety of ways now. So we're going to get used to using jQuery. This is basically sort of equivalent to document.getElementById, kind of. This here is the jQuery selector. We're going to select something in the HTML. So if we had something with an ID, in quotes, we would say pound my ID item. Don't type this. But obviously, if we were trying to find something in the HTML with an ID, that's exactly the same as document.getElementById. Notice the syntax. Dollar sign, parentheses, what are we trying to get? Pound, ID, my ID item. I think class, going to be deployed. Exactly. If there was something that was a class, we don't exactly have document.getElement by class, we have something like that. But in jQuery, it would be this, the dot. So jQuery, the motto is uh, write less, do more. So we're going to target that link and do something with it. We'll write what we're targeting in a moment. The something is that is dot on, open close parentheses. Remember we had, don't write this, but we had document dot get element by ID thing dot uh, on click equals something function. That was the old way to do it, the plain old JavaScript way. This is basically equivalent. And look at that, it's like eight characters instead of 30. So what we're doing here is we're waiting for a click. The button that we're going to click on, we're waiting for it to be clicked on. Right here, we're waiting for it to be clicked on. Do something. The syntax is just about the same. 
this would be the way that we would do it in plain old JavaScript. Document dot get element by ID. What's the ID thing? On click, once we click on the thing, run a function something. That's equivalent to that. Look at how it's less than half of the of the same amount of code. Document dot get element by ID thing on a click something. This is going to be pretty complex because what I want to do is make any button uh, that has an address, a data URL, I want to use this that we're about to write upon any element that has a data URL. So what we're targeting is going to be a class dot btn URL. So anything in our HTML <coughs> that has that class, this is going to pay attention to. This is going to trigger that. This is an event handler that we're setting up. On the event of a click, do the something. So coming back to the index file, HTML. This is incomplete. It has the data URL, but it needs that class that I'm referring to. So at the end, data URL, data role, data icon, class, btn URL, not with a dot, of course. The dot is in the JavaScript or the CSS, and this means the dot, class equals btn URL. We're setting up something in something useful, interesting, and slightly complex early on. So for the moment, just uh, just just follow along with it for the moment, and then I'll fully explain it in a moment. Yes. No. Okay. Uh, so we're making this catalog button clickable again and to be uh, referenced in the JavaScript now, btn URL. If we go back to the JavaScript, this will be a function, uh, let's call this load URL. Now the syntax for the moment of it is without parentheses. The basic syntax of this is without parentheses. Over here we have parentheses. This is going to launch a function called load URL. The whole point is I'm clicking a button to load a URL. Next line we need to define load URL, the function load URL. And just to make sure it's all working, we'll do a simple old alert. We got the URL. JavaScript of the three languages is the hardest one. A lot could go wrong. Baby steps. I want to do little by little. This is still not going to do what I want. This is still not going to do that whole in-app browser thing yet. But at this point, I want to check if I'm on the right track. We've got a button in HTML that should be triggered or should be you know, um, in the JavaScript should trigger it. What it'll trigger is running further a function called load URL, which will make a pop-up call alert. If it works at least at this point, then we can proceed. A quick way to start to test this stuff is in the command prompt to launch your browser. Instead of waiting for it to load on the emulator or the device, remember we have Cordova Run Browser. Let me get to mine. Cordova run browser. In my case, the browser loads faster than the emulator, and it loads faster than the device. If you spell it right.
So what I'm trying to test here is that this should load up in the browser, and I'm going to go to the art screen and click on catalog. It should make a basic pop-up that says whatever we wrote there. Store files on this device allow that was the splash screen. I'll go to art. I'll go to catalog pop up. We got the URL. Let's pause here. If you didn't get that pop up, we need to get that pop up before we make this fully work. Uh, raise your hand if it worked. If you got the pop up. Few people okay? Anyone need a little quick help? Let me put my code back up briefly. Once we're sure this works, then we can do the actually loading a website in that browser. <coughs>
So what we're doing here is we're setting ourselves up, just one moment over there, what we're doing is we're setting ourselves up to be able to click <coughs> on anything that has a class of BTN URL. We've, I've confirmed that at least that I'm able to click that, a lot of people have as well. And once you click anything with a class of BTN URL, it'll launch a function. Well, the way for us to extract the data URL is then pretty clever. We want this address embedded in that link. We want to extract the data in that data attribute. So we need to be a little more complex. In the index file, this is the basic syntax, after a click, run a function. We want to be more complex. We want to run a function also based on the data URL of that thing we clicked on. So we need to be more complex here. Instead of it saying load URL, we need to say function, open close parentheses, open close curly brace. With this syntax, we can do load URL with parentheses. Super subtle, but we cannot do load URL with parentheses without doing function. This syntax assumes no parentheses when we're launching a function. We need the parentheses to pass a value into it to use here. We have to go through this rigmarole. We say function, open close parentheses, open close curly brace, don't forget that. Load URL, open close parentheses. Once we have that, we can pass in these various values inside the parentheses dollar parentheses that's jquery that's J, that's the jquery selector and inside of that parentheses this we're saying launch the load url function and pass into it this thing that we clicked on. Everything that this is that we clicked on. We could get even more specific if we wanted to, but if we do it at this level, we are then able to much easier access any of the data attributes of an element. So here we're basically passing the whole object. JavaScript is object-oriented programming. It sees things as objects. I passed the whole object where I clicked into the function so I can use various attributes of the object. So instead of saying alert we got the URL, we're gonna pass into it pass into it an object. We're gonna say the OBJ, the object. This can be anything we want. Kitty cat. Alert kitty cat. And so what we're doing is we're passing an object, we're naming the object the object. Then we can start to do things with that object. What did we just name? What's that? We're gaining the ability to pass in a parameter into the function. We, we didn't have the parentheses a moment ago. The syntax of that is you simply state the name of the function and we cannot pass parameters into it. With this whole function thing, now we can pass parameters into it. Alert. The obj dot data quotes URL. Alert. Once we click the button, anything that's in the data dash URL attribute of that object. Which object? This one. The one we just clicked. Anything with a class of BTN URL. 
So all of this works by having data URL attribute attached to any button, the button having a BTN URL class, the object that was clicked on getting passed into the function, and then doing stuff with that object. I'm going to save that, and I'm going to run it again in the browser. What should happen after I click a button, it'll do the alert still, and this time it should say the address as part of the data URL attribute, not the part that said we got the click or whatever. It's going to say the data URL. It should say data URL. wait for mine to process. And yes, it's lots of parentheses right here that can get very lost very easily. That's why that's why I teach open and close your parentheses, open and close your curly braces, open and close your quotes, and then fill in what's inside. Because you're going to say, how many parentheses were on the right? Or two here, one curly, another parentheses. Because that one goes there, that one goes there, that one goes there. And that one goes there. So in theory, I'm going to go back to art. I'm going to click the catalog and alert. It's seeing the data.url, the data-url data popping up. This is a shorthand for this object that I clicked on. This object has a data URL, it has a data icon, a data whatever. For fun, data-icon. You don't have to do it, but that'll then show you what, what is data-icon equal to. This object has a data-icon attribute. I can alert it to display it. It's not going to display the graphic. It's going to display bullets. <coughs> That's what's, that's what's inside of the data icon attribute. I have a data role. So if I do data role, it'll simply say pop up alert button. So if I can confirm that data URL sees the address, the way I complete this is, first I'm going to comment out the alert. Double slash at the beginning makes a one-line comment. The way this really needs to work is Cordova dot in app browser, spelled exactly like that, dot open with parentheses. That is what the Cordova uh, documentation said. That's what will create an in-app browser. The Cordova object dot in-app browser sub-object dot open method. Let's open an address in the web browser powered by Cordova. And the documentation says that the way that works is the very first parameter is a URL, the second parameter is its target, and the third parameter is uh, address bar. So here if we type http colon slash slash www.website.com, it'll open the website in the in-app browser, comma target blank, like we're used to in HTML. Address bar, show an address bar, yes or no, true or false. But we're not going to hard code an address there. The whole point, really, of using functions and classes and such is to create and to ex extrapolate out uh, a kind of universal code that can be reused. So if I type one web address here, any button that I click on will always go to that web address. If only there were a way to somehow deal with an address of a particular button clicked. 
the obj dot data open close open close URL. I confirmed a moment ago on the previous line that that will look at the data URL attribute and alert it. And now here, using the NAT browser, I'm opening that address, whatever it may be, with, with whatever button is clicked with that class. In quotes, underscore blank. That's the plain old target blank from HTML. But in the syntax of JavaScript, following the Cordova spec, I want to display an address bar. Location equals yes. So all of that set up. It's only one, two, three lines of code. I'm ignoring my comment. Conceptually, that's pretty complex. It's very complex because we're making any button clickable with that class. We're passing in the object itself into the function. And then we're referencing one of the data attributes. And then the in that browser. Is it just location or something else that's breaking? It is location equals yes. But if we set up the algorithm, a lot of what programming is is creating the algorithm. What's the technique? What's the idea? What's the code? Once we set up the algorithm and it works, then we can reuse it uh, many times in the future. Now that I've written this, anywhere throughout my HTML project that I set class equal to btn URL, this will work with it. But it took the initial setup. I'm going to run that in the browser again. Now it'll work best on a real device or emulator. I think it'll behave a little bit weird in the browser, come to think of it. But I'll look at it in the browser briefly, and then I really want to write it on a device. And what should happen on the device is a mini web browser appears in your app. It shows you the address, data URL forward and back buttons built in with a close button. So let me confirm on mine. When I test on a real device, I like to go back to the home screen so that I know that the latest version of the app is going to load up. So in the browser, like I said, it's going to behave a little bit weird, but it is opening like a kind of mini web browser. It's not fully loading up yet. That's okay. Then I've got this close button, back button, and such. This works really the best when it works on a real device or emulator. So Cordova run Android device. If I'm running it on the browser, it's going to look weird. I'm going to click and I'm going to get some sort of like opening icon overlay kind of thing. It, it's working, kind of, but it'll work the best on a real device. What's that? Location, yes. 
This is to show yes or no an address bar. Address mm -hmm. bar? You know how when you... Know exactly. If you do location equals no, it, the, the user will not see that they're in a web browser in your app. If I go to art screen, I click on catalog, it pops up a, a brand new web browser at the top. Back and forward buttons, close button, there's the address bar, I'm loading up the college's website. I have, a, an, I have an obvious close button now. I don't need to rely on the back button. There's no back button on, a, on an iPhone. So I've got a close button there, and that takes me back to the app. That's the whole point of this in-app browser. And it opened up faster than opening up Chrome separately. It almost looks the same conceptually, but it's better because it's opening a web browser in my app, which then allows a close button, and then I'm back in my app. Question. Okay, I'll answer questions in just a moment. But the idea right here is this is a Cordova specific bit of JavaScript. We have the whole Cordova documentation, which will allow us to do a variety of things. The puzzle pieces. It's then up to us. Uh, to learn the puzzle pieces and use them for our prop for our purposes. We created an algorithm here to make something clickable to open an external website. If this worked, I can reuse it. If not, we'll do the break in a moment. The class is running low. So if it worked at to this point, good. We've been able to integrate a jQuery mobile project into a Cordova project. This is where we're going to go from now on. We have one more class meeting this week, then spring break then part three of the class. We're going to need to register for the class again on day one in two weeks. And we're going to learn some more jQuery mobile things. We're going to integrate a database, uh, other Cordova things, um, and go on. At this point, I'm going to put a copy of the latest version of my code into the network folder. And then I'll take people's questions. Remember, this is being recorded. You can always go back to refer to it or read the documentation. Question. Yes, I'm going to help people in just a moment once I finish my thought here. Uh, so this I'm going to put in the network folder, and uh, you can get a copy of it if you want. We'll do a little lab time.